Hello and welcome to the Bird Talk Show. We've got a really great show lined up today. I hope you enjoyed those clips at the beginning. We're going to talk about the origin of those clips, the genesis, how they came to be. Easy bird photography. Now, you don't hear that very often because if you've ever tried to photograph a bird, holy moly, maybe one of the more difficult subjects to photograph in nature. One, they're birds, most of them use their wings to fly. And two, they're quite small in comparison to the frame of any camera you've ever tried to shoot them with. But the reward is also fantastic. When you get a full frame in focus bird, you're quite proud of yourself. I'm going to tell you how to do it today. I'm just going to teach it for free. Here are the secrets. And uh, not all of them, not all of them. I'm, as a matter of fact, the best, the biggest secret, probably going to hold off maybe next week. I've got the um, necessary equipment. I've used it. I've got examples of having used it. It's very accessible, uh, but not today. Today, we'll just speak generally. We'll talk about uh, that easy bird photography and why, because it makes your life better. It's just so much fun. When you connect with nature, you heal. It's, it's, it's an experience that you can't replicate artificially. So, Bird photography takes you right out there into nature. You know, we had a paleontologist on the show as a guest, uh, Ashby Gale from Charleston Fossil Adventures. You can check out that YouTube channel recently monetized because of his dedication. He earned over a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time within a year period. So you're not wasting your time when you go over there to Charleston Fossil Adventures, adventures, uh, tell them bird garden sent you. And, um, you know, what, what we know is, well, a couple of things. You guys are smarter than I am. You, you know many more things than I do. But back to bird photography. Um, it's not always cheap. Typically, you think of extremely expensive. If you're going to get a lens capable of drawing a bird in full frame, you better um, fill up your pocketbook before you go shopping. But that's not the kind of photography we're talking about today. We're talking about affordable and accessible photography for people who just want to make their life better, to connect with nature, to bring your blood pressure down, to release um, your uh, distractions, to, to separate yourselves from who's been bugging you lately. And, and bird watching, bird feeding, bird photography, they all accomplish that. There was a strong connection in my mind to Charleston Fossil Adventures when I said that's a different type of um, outdoor adventure, but you're, you're out there, you're in the ocean, you're on the beach in the now, but you're finding artifacts eons ago. But still, that connection comes all the way to present day. So whether it's um, thousands of year old fossil or um, just seconds ago you stepped off a boat onto a beach, there's just something about it. Now, what I've learned, oh, uh, another thing, uh, Ashby took some bird photographs on his vacation in St. Lucia. He's got a nice video about that. And he shared some clips with us we used here on the Bird Talk Show. And lo and behold, one of them wasn't outdoors. It was at his breakfast table. The bird flew into his open villa, helped itself to some scrambled eggs off the breakfast table, hopped around, uh, in my opinion, it was very cooperative as far as making the video goes, star of the show, and then flew out the window and came in. So you don't even have to be outdoors to photograph birds. We've, we've shown you that here on the Bird Talk Show. But most of the time, it's going to take place outside because most of the birds are outside. But you've got some options there. Certainly there are zoos and exhibits that have birds indoor, um, which I've been to many. And I love, I love to see birds, especially ones that are well taken care of and have a real natural enclosure if they're captive. Um, but, you know, far and away, better to be outside, see them in the wild. Where as a, as a bird watcher and bird lister, uh, quasi-competitive bird lister, I'm not actually competing. There's no reward. There's no contest. I just... I list the birds and post the list publicly, as many bird watchers do. Those captive birds aren't countable. 
as wild species. You can have your own personal list of zoo birds or captive birds. I even have a list now. Holy cow. So many lists. Yard list, county list, state list. Which I need to pick up a couple more states here now that the weather is broken. Remind me about that. I have a Google Maps bird list. Birds that I can identify from Street View on Google Maps. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I've got some fantastic birds on that list. A white tern in Hawaii, a great horned owl in Florida. I mean, cool stuff that uh, the casual observer <laughs> doesn't notice. And it requires a lot of patience. And that's a weird form of bird photography. That's incidental bird photography. Now, we're not talking about that today, but there's a good example of how you can take pictures of birds and not mean to. I do know of people who have YouTube bird list and many vloggers. I mean, I, I've told you this before. It's hard to go someplace and, and birds aren't there. Birds are everywhere. So vloggers often get unintentional, incidental birds in their vlogs. Pretty cool. So I know people who keep YouTube list. But any, anywho, anywho. Um, on purpose, incidental, we're doing it on purpose today, the easy way, very accessible, very affordable. Thank you for being here. We got three people right off the bat. Thanks for dropping in. Hello, Liquids and Only Fans. It's been a minute and good morning to you, sir. Uh, it is afternoon here. We started at 1 p.m. And Freaky Fish Lady is here. Always glad to have you around. Thank you so much for checking in on the chat. We are going to be interacting with the chat. However, the majority of this live stream is going to be uploaded for replay content. So if you're in the replay gang, thank you so much. Um, and we're, uh, there are a few of you on the replay. I really appreciate that. Some of you are regular commenters. Thank you so much. And in the live stream, as always, it's an active chat. So I'm glad you guys come back week after week. What are we up to now? Episode 19. Can you believe it? And that's just since we started counting. Probably there's been a few more than that. And we talk about ways that make your life better. Now, on the channel, the Bird Garden YouTube channel, on the channel, in the description below, there'll be a link to another playlist. You can you can learn all you want about the Bird Garden channel. Here's our colors. All right, oops. Here's our colors. It's a kind of a a dark gray, bright green. Right. You know you found us when you see that color scheme. Um, I, I say. I say, give me a minute of your time. I'll make your life better. Prove me wrong. I've never been challenged on that because I did a series of one minute and a series of 15 second shorts, YouTube shorts featuring outstanding bird photography, full frame birds, big birds in the frame, in focus, active. And if you'll watch four of those 15 second videos, shorts on YouTube, on the Bird Garden channel, your life will be better. You'll be in a better mood one minute later after viewing four of those 15 second clips, any four, there are a hundred, pick any four. After one minute, 15 seconds each equals one minute, you'll feel better. Yeah, give it a whirl. I mean, it may not be a universal truth. There may be an exception. I've not heard of one yet. Uh, but all of the things I mentioned at the top of this show are true. When you watch one minute of those clips, you're just taken away from what ails you. You're put out there in nature. And we, for some reason, as humans, trust nature as, as good and where we belong. Man, you got woo-woo, got deep there in a hurry. But, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It's true. What's in the heart comes out the mouth sometimes. And I can't wait to get back out there. I've been doing a bird chase this week. we got a rare bird in the area. I caught a glimpse of it one evening. I've been going back in the morning trying to get a better look, better light. No luck. This thing is stealthy, and it is rare in my area. I've seen it in several other states, fairly common. But first one in northeast Tennessee, I'll tell you what it is. It is the white-winged dove. It looks very similar to a morning dove. It doesn't have spots on the wings. And then as the wing, the folded wing against the body, that curve at the bottom of the wing, that area is white, white and gray bird. And then when it spreads its wings to fly, that makes a big white patch on the wing, about the same size as morning dove. And one of my cameras automatically activated there. 
because I was waving my arms. I'm going to show you that coming up. Five of you here today. Canestio Valley Cichlids, welcome. Hello to you, sir. It looks like Liquid Zoo Only Fans was first in the chat today. Congratulations. That's the first time you've won that honor in a while. Thank you so much for being here. Um, easy photography is a relative term. Okay. I've had, um, I started working in photography when I was in high school with a little Nikon EM kit. If any of you camera heads out there and, um, the shutter bugs, I guess is the word. Uh, I, I just had an eye for it. I could frame a shot pretty easily. So, uh, when I got into college, my freshman year of college, I took the two semesters of photography class, straight A's, probably my favorite class. And uh, just kind of had a knack for it. I knew what I wanted to see when the picture, and I'm going to date myself, when the photograph developed. We had to take film. I'm not going to explain that. We had to take film out of a camera. And we had to develop it. And then we ended up with a negative. And then we projected the negative on a special paper. I'm not making this up. I'm not. If you're... If you're um, if you're a millennial or younger, good for you, first of all. And uh, don't make me explain this. Watch some archival videos. But I had a knack for it, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed lots of aspects. Mostly, it took me outdoors. I was shooting outdoor landscapes and scenes. I, I shot some birds, and that's when I first recognized, holy cow, regular 35-millimeter shot, tiny, tiny little bird, probably... Um, one five thousandth of uh, of the full frame. If you're talking about just a standard 55, a 50 millimeter frame, standard photo lens, boom, tiny, tiny bird. Uh, the one that I'm recalling that comes to mind is was a, a male northern cardinal, bright red. Hadn't have been bright red. If it would have been a brown sparrow, you would have never seen it. Uh, then I said, well, you know, I want to photograph birds some more, so I'll buy a telephoto lens. Okay, cha-ching. Uh, bumped up from a 50 millimeter to a 135. And now the bird is two and a half times larger. So it went from a speck to a big speck. And maybe you could see its eyes uh, differentiate when the fed, the plumage on the face stopped and the beak started. Still, that was not a bird photograph. That was a photograph with a bird in it, right? Let's see. I, I hope that's not snow, Canestio Valley. I think it's rain. We've been having rain. Uh, Canestio Valley said, we're getting snowfall. As, oh, they are in New York, of course. Uh, Red-winged blackbirds in the snow. Beautiful. Yeah, I thought that was about you're watching the the 24 seven live stream on another window. I've got that to share with you. We'll go out there shortly. Um, we've had red winged blackbirds. I released a couple of videos. It is raining and the blackbirds were out there. I mean, it's showtime. They were out there. Of course, now they're not. I'm looking at the little inset here. Why don't I go ahead and share that with you as we continue to talk about easy bird photography. There you go. There's the morning dove. Uh, we had some rain, a couple of days, a couple of days of rain. We got six people here today already. Gypsy Rhodes, hey, how's it going? Speaking of bird-like song, that Gypsy Rhodes, she can sure sing a song. Check out that YouTube channel. You'll be glad you did. Here we got the morning dove feeding, lots of bird activity. What was that that came in there? See that tail left side suet ball feeder? That's indicative of a woodpecker, that stiff tail. That's what they use to brace themselves against the tree trunk while they hold on with their claws. And just peck the heck out of that thing. What is that with the red belly and specks all over it? Come around here, woodpecker. Don't I, I've got a suspicion. We may have a brand new bird at the bird garden feeding station. No, no, we don't. No, no record here. That's just a red belly woodpecker that's wet. But a great shot of its red belly you don't often see. There's Carolina Wren in the feeding tray, often mistaken for a red-headed woodpecker because the red belly woodpecker has the red band on top of the head. I think that's the male, and it has the red head going from um, just the base of the beak all the way back around to the nape. And then the female does not have the red on the crown, just on the back of the head. 
You're welcome, Gypsy Rhodes. How do we do this easy bird watching? We're 16 minutes in. We're talking about one way you put the feeder out, right? Which leads directly to easy bird photography. How do we do that? Well, the easiest way is to go where you know there are going to be birds like that northern mockingbird, the state bird of Tennessee, right there on the pillar feeder, hopping over to the other pillar feeder, extreme right. Great. Way to go. Way to go, mockingbird. Nice pose. Yellow eye. Gray all over. White outer tail feathers. Large white stripe on the wings, both open and closed. There's the female northern cardinal and the male house finch. I'm calling them as I see them more. Oh, that's a male northern cardinal. Striking. Striking. Now you look at the beak dominance here. That mockingbird doesn't back down from many at the feeder. That northern cardinal is a gross beak. He could do some damage. I don't know that uh, he'd want to actually mess with that mockingbird, but oh, on the right fence rail. See the fence rail back there over on the right? I can see a northern male cardinal perch because he's so bright red. What we're viewing, we're viewing the uh, bird garden feeding station, 24-7 live feeding station, uh, and we're watching it live. This is the same stream that's live on YouTube right now. Uh, this is a form of bird photography. Is it easy? Yeah. I'm not doing anything. I did something a year ago. I invested big bucks and uh, several professionals and uh, installed this outstanding equipment. But now I'm able to bring this to you just because you turned on YouTube. And that's about as easy as it gets. But I wouldn't say it's accessible because the expense was extreme, in my opinion. Uh, I could have done a lot of things, and so can you, for what it costs to set up this broadcast feeding station. Okay, now the feeding station itself, it's premium, but it's accessible. Yeah, if you wanted to, you could you could do that. You could pull off this feeding station. The feeding station and the camera equipment, all the technology, the digital connections and so forth, It's a, it's another story. So that's not what we're talking about today. We're not talking about just because it's easy, you can turn on YouTube. That's that's bird photography watching, okay? That's not bird photography. So, so this is easy. This is easy bird photography, but not what we're talking about because I've decided it's not accessible. By the way, at the 20-minute mark, I want to ask you to hit that like button if you haven't already, if you're enjoying the show, if you're watching the replay. Uh, that really strikes a nerve with the algorithm and says, hey, people like to watch birds eating food. And that's what we do here on this station. And we travel all over at least the United States on this station. I've been to several countries. I don't think I've filmed anything out of the country for the YouTube channel yet. Keep an eye on me there. So the like button is very important. If you're not a subscriber yet, we always appreciate new subscribers. And that's one way that the channel grows. If if we achieve more subscribers, we get more share time on YouTube and we can have more people making their life better by watching birds. We'll make this place grow. We'll make some new friends. Um, if you're going to subscribe, go ahead and hit the bell icon so you know when we're going to do things like this live stream. When you know when we're going to upload new content, boom, gets you a notification. And also, this is, I also mention this quite regularly, Carolina Wren front and center is it, you get notification when I use the community tab, which I'm fond of using to promote information on this channel, to promote other channels, to promote things I find interesting and think you might find. So hit the notification bells. There are two. There's a pair of Carolina Wrens. Uh, you get the notification whenever the community tab is used here on the channel. We got a comment over here from Canessio Valley Cichlids. It says, Bird Garden, have you had a northern flicker to the feeder? And the answer is no. No northern flicker on the feeder. However, they have been on the video because they feed on the ground up there around that tree. You could, I've seen two or three up there just working the ground. And I'm like, dude, thanks for posing. I appreciate that. And if you look through the, the video, the vast video vault on the Bird Garden channel, you'll see flickers as a feature bird species highlight. Because I've filmed them up there on the on the bank, just walking through the yard, eating bugs, worms, whatever. But no, they haven't been to the feeder. Now, I have seen them on feeders before. They just haven't been to this feeding station. Uh, and I think 
I've got a pond, right? You've heard about the uh, outstanding koi pond, my dream pond. Uh, you can learn more about it. We're not going to talk about it, but if you go over, look down there in the lower left of your screen, I'm showing you the sticker for that channel, the Pond Life YouTube channel. Um, hundreds of videos, several on the dream pond, the build from, from when the grass was green to the broken ground was red with clay to the liner, to the hardscaping, to the filling, to the adding fish. I filmed that uh, pond being built. So it's got a 26 foot waterfall down into a 5,000 gallon basin. And you can imagine a waterfall with that force, just the drop. And that's a steep bank. If you can't tell by looking there, that water drops and it splashes at every little level. It drops off great water sound sidebar here. The water sound is so soothing. We absolutely love it, but it's so loud. I can't turn the volume on the bird feeding station. So you can hear the bird song because it sounds like just a roaring static. And that's how the microphone interprets that babbling brook, which is so unfortunate. Oh, white crowned sparrow, enjoy that while you can. They will not be here much longer. They'll be headed north to their breeding ground, but it's been a fantastic winter visitor. We're so glad to have those guys. The splashing of the two of them, a pair of white crowned sparrows. Three, that was a third came in, one left. Wow, all adults start white and black stripes on the head. The juveniles are tan and brown stripes on the head. No fool you if you don't know what you're looking for. But as that water splashes out the overspray from that babbling brook, the ground along the edge of the stream um, stays a little damp. And I think that attracts a lot of bugs and, um, and worms and things. And so <laughs> the there's a juvenile. Speak of the juvenile, brown and tan. So the flickers have learned they can just walk up and down the waterfall along the edge <clears throat> and make their own smorgasbord. I've provided, incidentally, there's that word again, I've provided, incidentally, a smorgasbord for northern flickers. And here at the bird feeding station, 24-7 live bird feeding station on the Bird Guard YouTube channel, nowhere else. Bird feeding station in Tennessee with over 75 species identified. Actually, in the yard, we've had over 85 species. That's phenomenal diversity right here. But the flickers are eating over there by the waterfall. Great question. Um, and they just don't bother to come over and eat seeds or suet. Nope, got some worms and bugs over here. You guys go ahead and eat all of that suet and seed that you like. So that's the story of the flickers. But I still was able to photograph them. Now, I'll tell you another little sidebar here. We're, we're on topic. It's a short rabbit trail. I photographed and filmed the flickers. Oh, there's that north. Oh, red winged blackbird. Yeah, he's hiding the red portion of his epaulette, those shoulder pads. But in the video I released last week, he's displaying. There it is. Oh, with the red-headed woodpecker. Oh, my gosh. My life just got better. Red-headed woodpecker. Beautiful bird. Our, I mean, it's our icon bird, right, here at the bird garden. And one of my favorites, the uh, red-winged blackbird. Where was I? I photographed the flickers with a handy cam, you know, just a little camcorder, put it on a tripod so I could zoom in because the thing with birds, again, they're so small, you're going to have to use that zoom. And once you zoom in, it's real shaky. So get a tripod and a handy cam. Some of you already have a handy cam. Great. Get a little tripod, put under it. Now you're photographing birds. Okay. As that red winged blackbird returns, that's the male. Females are not black with red and yellow wings. They're kind of brown speckled. And that is not a female red-winged blackbird. That is a cowbird. No speckles, solid slate gray. Shorter beak, stouter beak. Brown-headed cowbird female. And those things sometimes migrate in enormous flocks of a thousand. Yeah, you can get a cloud of cowbirds. Parasitic nesters, they're not very well liked around here. They kick warbler eggs out of the warbler nest, lay their egg. Now the tiny warbler has to raise this big behemoth, lots and lots of energy. I mean, that's nature. I don't like it, sad, but that's nature. Okay, anyway, handy cam on a tripod. We're just going to put that out there as, yep, you can do it. Or 
24 seven live stream. Yep. You can do it, but that's not what we're talking about. That's not the easy accessible birding photography we're talking about today. What you do know, you do know that I use my uh, cell phone on the reg, my beautiful wife's picture on there. And, um, it's my camera. It's my, it's my video machine. It's what I do. I, I do landscape a lot. I just film whatever I need to right there on the old 4k. Uh, that's the Apple XR, the 10 R uh, several generations behind the latest was it 13. Now the iPhone 13 fantastic video, easy. Take it out of my pocket. Do the, the unpinch finger zoom. Boom. Got birds. Do they bring that distant bird in full frame? Nope. No, they don't. No, they don't. How are you going to do that? Well, we've talked about expensive lenses. We've talked about expensive handy cams, big zoom, 4K, Eastern bluebird male right there on that center tray and female on the three bowl feeder, just above a white crown sparrow and another white crown sparrow on the suet balls. That's a female house finch on the right filler, Peter, joined by the male. You know, another female house finch there on the front. Morning dove in the feeding tray. Action, action, action. 46 degrees in rain, as you can tell there in the bird garden. And so the phone, I do use it. That is a way, all right? Question answered. How do you do easy bird photography that's accessible? Use your cell phone. Now, there's a couple of ways you can use your cell phone that are better than other ways, all right? But not today. Not today. 28 minutes in. Now I'm up to the big reveal. Well, what is it then? I mean, you believe me, right? There's an easy, accessible way to get full frame <clears throat> bird photographs, right? What's accessible? Um, less than $1,000. Definitely less than $1,000. Uh, less than $500. Yeah, it's got to, if it's $500, that's not accessible. Uh, tufted titmouse on the back side of that pillar feeder. Now you can only see his tail. There he is on the right side. Tufted titmouse, gray bird, a little bit of black right over the beak, black eyes. Got some uh, orangish coloration on the sides, down the lower flanks, right by the legs. 10 people here. Thank you guys for being here. Um, 500, you know, you, that's a, that's a savings account. You know, that's a vacation fund. That's, that's not accessible. That's not walking around money for most people. Um, about 300 bucks. Okay. All right. 300 bucks is doable. All right. Not, maybe you don't have it in your pocket. Maybe you're going to have to alter some spending habits for a, a short period of time to accumulate, uh, you know, $300 of expendable cash, 200. All right. 200. Now 200, I'm going to put solidly in the accessible category, 200 bucks. Not, and now that's not cheap. And I'm not saying if you don't have $200 to go buy some photography equipment that, that you're losing because you're not, I'm just saying that if you wanted to make a $200 purchase, over a, a brief period of time, meaning not a long period of time, right? Maybe for some of us, it's two or three paychecks. Maybe for others, it's six or eight paychecks. You know, maybe it's six months. But probably in less than a year, uh, we could come up with 200 bucks. I know when I used to save my pocket change. Have you guys ever done that? That's something else. I'm dating myself. I used to spend cash and I would get change back. Some of it wasn't in dollars, but it was in coins. Well, I put the coins in a jar, right? Just the end of the day, coins in the jar. And every now and then, the jar would fill up or I would want a, a splurge fund and I would count change out of the jar. Well, there were a number of times, um, you know, that it was 200 bucks, depending on the size of your jar, you know, how often you get change. I wasn't spending the change is the point. I didn't need it. It wasn't part of the budget. Once I had change given to me, it was just in the jar. You know, it's a good way to accumulate a little bit of money. But it didn't take a long time to accumulate $200 worth of change. So that's my frame of reference. $200 is accessible. Now, I'm going to do an internet search here. And I don't know 
hope now I'm not screen sharing this so you guys can't see this, but I'm just gonna get a real time uh check on some pro yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm I thought I was correct. I'm correct. So at two hundred dollars, I'm gonna introduce you to a camera. And I'm going to say, you've already seen the work of this camera. Full frame, in focus, birds. All right. Let me go back to me. Eight people still hanging around. I haven't run everybody off yet. Um, two to $300 is easily managed with PayPal and four payments. Canessio Valley, bam, with the financial information there. So there you go. You, you, now you can bust it up. Two to 300 bucks into four payments. All right. Um, thank you, Canessio Valley Cichlids, for that input. I'm going to remember that when we talk about binoculars again, and we're going to. But we're talking about photography today. Now, let's go back to me. Hi. Watch this, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Raise your hand in chat. Leave a comment below. If you know, I want to show you the clip. Comment in the chat. Leave a comment below if you know how I got this clip. Here we go. All right. Let me know if you know how I did that. Now, two things I want to say. First, full frame and focus. That's what we're talking about. It's just that easy. You just saw it. I just posted it up there. can hit a button, can show it to you anytime I want to. I can take a still frame from that. Any frame you saw, I can freeze, take a, fill, a still frame. So photography, it's actually a video. It's a video. Okay. The camera is also capable of taking still shots a photograph think think um and so the video is just so much more versatile i found so i use videos and take a still when i need one but i mean i was amazed at how accessible this technology was i was amazed could not be especially that bird you saw is sitting on top of the 24 7 uh feeding station the live feeding station so it's just out of frame it's the top part of the feeding station that you don't see. Okay, which we can go back to. We'll keep an eye on that, see if anything's going on. So, so the bird's just out of frame that you saw. All right, so my experience is, wow, you wanna get a picture of that bird feeding station, share it with people 24 <laughs> seven, you better, you know, you better plan ahead because that's a major project. But the thing I want to mention is it also included audio. Okay, still pictures don't give you a lot of audio because they're still pictures. And in the audio, you heard some light bird chirping and you heard some light waterfall uh, sound in the background. Well, that's because we're at the accessible range all right you know that that lower end of the spectrum that's accessible to most people and the video the audio is not fantastic on that camera it's not adequate very adequate and you get audio so but it's it's definitely directional um and it's a bit muted it's not it's not crisp but it muted out that water sound for the most part so you could hear a little bit of bird sounds now um gypsy roads has guessed GoPro, Canessio Valley Cichlid says uh, YZ. And Canessio also said a Wi Fi cam, which is correct. It is a Wi Fi cam. It's got Wi Fi and yet it's accessible. Let me, can I just show it to you? Are you ready? All right, make your comment below if you're waiting. I mean, if you're going to guess, do it now because I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to show it to you. I've got a timing is important here. All right, you ready? Can you see it? That's it. That's it. It's instructions how to take the, the back cover off. All right, you see the light when it's recording? It's recording you right now. It's recording. You know what it is now?
it's the Blink camera system. Blink, uh, downy woodpecker, redheaded woodpecker on the feeder right there. B L I N K Blink, not sponsored. Just happens to be an outfit that I found, gave it a whirl, like it. So I put a battery in that comes with a battery, redheaded woodpecker, awesome. Uh, two year lithium battery. It's got, uh, well, you saw it recording there, so it's motion activated. It's Wi Fi. I control it from my phone. All right. Let me give you an example of, of things I've captured on my phone. I'm gonna, This is going to be when I'm holding it up to the camera. I apologize for the poor quality, but that's what it is today. This is a camera I have mounted in my front door for security. Okay. Isn't that a nice doormat? My sister got me that. And this is what happens when a bird lands on your security camera. That was the last, that was the last photograph. That was the last use of that camera in that position. And then this happened. Okay. Did you hear that knocking around? That was a bird up there landed on the camera, then got behind it, started pecking it, knocked it down. So now it looks at the stairs instead of the door. Pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right. And then this is what we just filmed as I showed you the camera. Kind of take the, the back cover off. All right. You see the light when it's recording. It's recording you right now. It's recording. You know what it is now? Okay. So that was it. How, how easy is that? Now, um, now that I have that uh, recorded on my phone, it's also got, it's got a little share icon. I can share it. And in the app, Apple uh, ecosphere, I can share it via AirDrop from my phone to my desktop so that I can put it into iMovie and make a video out of it. And that's how you get all these clips too easy. Now, some of you have already jumped ahead uh, and, and look, the Canestio Valley says he's going to have to check it out. Well, I just, I, I went over here, put blink camera in Google. And what I see is one camera, $89.99. Okay. Uh, blink X2 looks like three cameras. It comes with a little Wi-Fi unit to three cameras, 139 outdoor. It's sealed up. Everything's cool. Um, I've had three of these working outdoors. You've seen videos from most of them. Uh, and it's, in my opinion, it's great. I, I mounted one to a birdhouse and I've got great footage of a downy woodpecker and Eastern bluebird using it as a nighttime roost. And the, the downy woodpecker latches onto the front and makes the hole bigger to suit him. It's right out here. It's back behind this wall out to the front. So I can hear when I would hear that, <laughs> drumming on the house from the downy woodpecker i go outside and i would look all over the house um this is brick dude how are you making that noise the gutters are metal when i found it i found it he was on the wooden cavity box that i set out front so then i mounted the camera to it they still came back i've got lots of fantastic footage i mean the the birdhouse box the birds don't even fit into the whole frame. They're so big. The birds are bigger than the frame. Let's see if I can find that camera. I'll go home on my, I and mean, this is so nice. It tells me, uh, here it is. Let's see. See, there's the birdhouse. And it tells me that that battery is low. I'm going to have to replace that battery. All right, no problem. It's just, I mean, ease of use is amazing. Let's see if I can go into the, all of the stuff. No, I deactivated that. I got so many, so many clips. I deactivated that camera, but I had four cameras running at one time, all giving notifications to the phone. Unless I didn't want notifications, I could turn the notifications off. 
Uh, they do nighttime filming. They go into infrared. Uh, I thought it was just an incredible value. Now, a caveat. When I started using these cameras, you just bought them and used them. Now I think Blink does have a subscription service so that your um, the clips that they record go into their own cloud, so to speak. They have their own storage for the clips and you have to buy the space and you pay by the month for that. So beware. I don't have that. I got the my equipment uh, predates the subscription service. So just beware if you, if you look into that. So now the, the, the problem is solved. You need a place where birds are. And then they like to come according to my videos to bird houses, bird feeders, uh, bird baths. You may have another place. Great. You don't have any of those. Watch a couple videos. I've got one minute videos, 30 second videos, how to attract birds. 10 best ways to attract birds. Easy way to attract birds. How to attract birds in 30 seconds. Proven. Uh, do that. Set up one of these cameras. Enjoy your life. Now, how much is it worth to make your life better? How much time do you have to invest in setting up the camera where the birds are attracted? I don't know. I don't know. If you don't have time, if it's not the right project for you right now, please watch some of these bird garden videos. I put it out there for you to watch. You don't have to change the batteries. You don't have to set it up. You don't have to spend any money. Just tune in for free. If you don't mind, hit the like button while you're there. That helps me out. I appreciate it. Subscribe. I don't know. I, re I subscribe to so many channels. I don't know why you wouldn't subscribe to a channel that you like and hit the icon, the notification bell icon, so you know when they upload new content. I, I do that. Um, that's how I discovered the importance of the community tab, um, which I thought of. a. a this may be corny. You guys may not be interested. I'm going to ask seven people right now, seven people watching. If you're able to use the chat, uh, do that. How would you feel about naming a bird nerd of the week? We'll just celebrate someone, someone out of chat every week. Uh, maybe you don't want to do that. You're like, oh, no, no, don't celebrate me. I come in here so I can lurk. OK, all right, cool. But if you like that, if you want to celebrate one of our chatters, one of our bird garden viewers, one of our bird nerds, we want to nominate a uh, bird nerd of the week. Let me know if that's a program you're interested in. I may put some thought into development. Just just celebrating someone for being here. You know, we've got um, uh, six people still watching. The whole chat's just full of nice people saying nice things. That's so cool. Participating in my questions, talking with one another. <clears throat> And Gypsy Road says, sure, we're all bird nerds. Okay. Well, we'll just, well, I'll think about that over the next week and stand by to be celebrated. All right. That's a little bit of housekeeping. I mean, isn't that cool? We talked about, we solved the mystery of how to photograph birds. Easy bird photography, in my opinion, accessible. Let's put a camera on them. Get a little blink camera. A little blue light comes on. And there's also a, a toggle switch. You can turn that blue light off. If it bothers the birds or whatever, you don't have to use that blue light. But full frame, in focus, bird photography, accessible. Comes, it takes a video and it records audio. I mean, the camera itself, less than 100 bucks. If you want to add on the, the one that we found together here on YouTube, I found it. Gypsy Roads verified it. Uh, hey, 139 bucks for three cameras. I... That's as easy as an, and accessible as it gets. And I, they sell those as security cameras. Okay, it's a security camera. I'm not trying to bend the rules. I've used it for bird photography, and it is amazing. For the price point, I mean, um, Gypsy Rhodes guessed GoPro. I love GoPro. Uh, 400 bucks to 900 bucks. Bam. Sweet. GoPro. Uh, and with an add-on, I did, I wanted the GoPro with an add-on, uh, external programming, I guess you can get motion sensitive. I'm sorry. Motion activated, man, 46 minute mark. I was going strong and boom, need that throat loss. All right. So the GoPro wasn't. Didn't have motion detection. 
I didn't want to fool with the uh, external software interface. So I found the Blink, and I've been very happy. And if you do get the Blink, A, I want to know about it. B, uh, and by the way, I'm not sponsored. I'm not an affiliate. I just use it, and I like it, like so many other things. Now, there is, uh, next, I told you there's one thing. I'm being, I'm, getting, uh, I'm keeping something in the dark over here. <laughs> I had an offer to be an affiliate uh, for a company. And I'm considering it because I love and I use the product. No matter where I go, look at activity right now, Harry Woodpecker, three Northern Cardinals. I use the product. I believe in the product. Have no I, no, no holdback at all from promoting the product. And you guys have thoughts on that, uh, creators being affiliates and then saying positive things about uh, someone that's given them a, a small commission on sales generated by their influence. Is that a sellout? Hey, Melvin Reef, welcome, buddy. I don't know. I don't think so. If you're receiving affiliate funds, I don't think you're selling out. I think you're you're earning your keep and you're you're just maximizing and monetizing your platform. I'm okay with it. But I would like to know what your opinion is on that and make I'll have to make a decision. Usually, I mean, usually, probably this week, whether or not I'm going to uh, become an affiliate for this particular company. And either way, it's it's an outstanding product, and I will share it with you in the near future. Uh, I'm giving you a forewarning. Thank you for being here, all nine of you hanging out, and all of, all of you that come in the replay. Wow, dozens. Um, yeah, maybe I'll be an affiliate, and if so. Definitely let you know about that. I won't I won't keep that in the dark and say, go buy this. And then, oh, by the way, I'm getting a kickback. Um, so let me know what your feelings are on that. And on that, so that was the affiliate and a tease to an upcoming product. If you like this one, you're going to love the next one. I mean, no, seriously, you are. Gypsy Road says not a sellout. And Carla asks, hello, welcome. First time I've seen you in the chat today, Carla asks, thanks for being here. It says, uh, if you believe in it. Well, not only do I believe in it, I put my money where my mouth is and I paid cash, no discount. Full retail for the product. Used it, loved it. Now I use it every time I use this style of bird photography. So I'm definitely a believer. Thank you. Thank you so much for your feedback. I appreciate that. Yeah, so uh, we'll check on that. A new product coming up. Ah, probably next. I'll decide about the affiliation within the next week. And then uh, maybe next week we'll talk about the new product. We'll just do a continuation. More easy bird photography. But if you do go with the Blink system, let me know and definitely put some videos up someplace we can share them. I'll be happy to share them for you. I'll give you a shout out for sure if you use that Blink system and you want to share some of your content that you gather with at 50 minute mark right now. Um, uh, housekeeping, show notes. Call to action, check. You guys are going to click the clicks. Sharing. We don't talk a lot about sharing. Sharing is caring. If you've got a YouTube channel and or a Facebook, Instagram, any of those social medias, you want to help uh, the bird fam out here, share this content, share this link to this live stream, find your favorite video, share it, copy the link to the channel, share it. We'll get some more friends in here. That's how the channel grows. That's how we know we're doing good work. We can make more people's lives better just by inviting them over. Go ahead and do that if you haven't shared. If you haven't had that experience, it's quite easy. It's just a couple of clicks. You're already on YouTube. You see the share button right below the video. Go for it. Tell me about it in chat and in the comments below if you do that. I'd be happy to thank you for doing that on the next live stream. So... I did make contact. We talked last week a little bit about the, and you can go back and check that on episode 18. I left that up for replay. Uh, we talked a little bit about the Pileated Woodpecker and the Ivory Build Woodpecker, and I've made contact again um, 
with Matt Cortman, who is the founder of Mission Ivory Bill. And we are going to try to get together this month. So hopefully we'll have a fantastic piece of content to share with you concerning the, the uh, Ivory Bill Woodpecker that has just captured the imagination of the world and several times throughout history and in several different ways. And it's made the world better in my opinion. So I'm happy to speak to Matt about his efforts regarding the Ivory Bill Woodpecker and we'll see where that goes. And that should be coming up within the month also. It's a good month and not to mention migration is happening. Migration. I mean, look at the feeder. See the feeder on the screen right now. The, Let's see, these birds, okay? They're going to change. There'll be some that aren't there in the coming weeks and new ones that replace them because migration is happening. And that's going to be happening for the next six, eight weeks uh, in earnest. Then it's going to taper off. So right now is the beginning and it's going to ramp up. If I do this hand, you can see it's going to ramp up, plateau, taper off. All right, so we're ramping up. We're on the ramp up. That's what we're doing these days. I look forward to talking to Matt, and I can't wait to share that with you. We'll figure out what we're going to do with that bird nerd of the week. It looked like we had a nomination already. Liquid Zoo only fans has been nominated as a bird of the week, noted. Bird nerd of the week. Yeah, we'll take that into consideration. Let's see. Wrong way. Which, uh, which view do you guys like better? I like that one. You can hear everything that's going on, and then you get a, a larger glimpse of the birds when they come in. Now, um, last week, it's like 70 degrees. Remember we pointed that out? This week, 46. Welcome to March in Tennessee. <laughs> Weather changes. That northern mockingbird is back. Not typically a bird feeder bird. Not typically. But this guy, he says, you know what? I'll eat whatever I want. Don't worry about it. I'm not. I'm not worried about it. That particular seed pillar he's eating is infused with fruit. So it's probably got dried cranberries in it. He could be eating those. That center plastic tray on the lower pole there, that's got... Freeze-dried mealworms, that is a seed. That bird just ate a seed. White crowned sparrow. And the white crowned sparrow, that was a small suet ball, tiny little suet balls, and freeze-dried mealworms in that plastic tray. Large suet balls on the left, and then the three-bowl feeder is filled with loose seed. Sunflower seed, safflower seed, some millet, not much. But it's all no mess, meaning there's no holes. No holes accumulate below the feeder. And all that equals a little more expensive at the cash register. You can get cheaper food. And I've used it very successfully for years and years. But now I enjoy using the, the premium food, which reminds me, I've got some art. We haven't done an art auction in a minute, 55 minutes. I've got a couple pieces of art. Do we want to do an art auction? Is that something we want to do? We have a lot of fun when we do that. And it does help offset the expense. Uh, the, listen, the existence of the 24-7 live birding feeding, feeding station doesn't, it's not dependent on the art auction. It does help right in there. Um, and I enjoy doing the auctions if you do. Let me know if we want to do some, some auctions. That helps. I have offered... Um, the art grab bags will just grab bags in general. If you wanted to make a donation, to help the channel. Those are not very popular. My experience, a couple of you have very appreciatively purchased the grab bags, but not many. Uh, and the art gypsy roads can't see. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Leave your comment below. If you're watching the replay, um, you can weigh right in there too. Here's a couple. And you know, we did the, uh, the better verse. The Betaverse paintings are gone. We sold all of those. All right. This one is actually entitled Bird Watcher. So we got Bird Watcher and we have Amphibious. 
so if that's something you're interested in, let me know. We may bring an auction back. Uh, had to get healed up from the last one there a little bit. Went a little bit sideways. So many loose ends just being loose. After such smooth precision, <laughs> everything working out uh, as as I intended, and then just, uh, yeah, a shock. Oh, wow, this and this. And, like it accumulated, and then the dam broke. Yeah, no, I just, I didn't. Too much, too much head space required to deal with all that. So exhale, <sighs> had to process all that. I don't know. Maybe we can do a, we can do another one if you want to. The Canestia Valley says not this week, but next week. Okay. All right. Well, that's not a no. We'll see. I'll, I'll keep thinking about it too. Yeah. My heart's not hundred percent back into it yet either, but we probably at some point in the future, no, no ties here. We'll have another art auction. I did have a couple of offers people wanting to buy outside of the auction. And um, they made very nice, very special uh, offers and so forth. But typically when we do the art auction, it's a community event. Everyone gets involved. We have a lot of fun. And uh, the vast majority of the time, the art is sold at a discount. Uh, there are a few occasions, some very generous bidders. Can I see a Valley Cichlids is here? I don't mean to leave anyone out, but holy cow. You, they just, I don't know. They win the lottery. They get a nice lottery ticket that week, and they want to help the channel out, and they do, and that's that's very much appreciated. But that said, if it's not, if it's not an auction, if we're not doing a community event and, you know, expecting to... Uh, to celebrate with some discounts, then, you know, if you want to inquire about a piece that, you know, it was shown in an auction, didn't sell, or you want to make a purchase, the best thing to do is, is ask for a price because they all, they all have a price. And rarely uh, during the auction is the price met. I'm happy to pass that <clears throat> discount along to the lucky bidder. Uh, because we do have such fun and it is a community event. Everyone's pitching in. Even if you're not bidding, you're having to endure the listening. So we try to make that as entertaining as possible. And that's the deal uh, on the art auction. That's the state of the art. See what I did there? That is the state of the art. Okay. We're at 59 minutes. We're going to have to wrap up here. We go for 60 minutes starting every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. We've had a great show today. We've talked about easy bird photography go back if you're just tuning in re-watch this stream and learn man we show it to you we demonstrate it it's right here in the live stream it's accessible but by, by everyone's measure in the chat we discussed what is accessible price wise this thing meets the accessibility criteria and delivers in my opinion a serious bang for your buck so if you're just tuning in do yourself a favor and go back and Check the beginning of this live stream and find out the secrets that were revealed today on the Bird Talk show right here on the Bird Garden YouTube channel, where we've got that 24-7 live bird feeding station going right now. You can watch me feed my birds. You don't have to clean up after them. You don't have to buy the bird seed. Just tune in and make your life better. We're going to talk about it again next week. Until then, why don't you get out there and see some birds?